Right. <clears throat> Our last video for this unit is writing linear equations from word problems or just answering questions um, from linear equations and word problems. So let's review. The linear equations we've worked with have been y equals rise over run times x plus b, right? Where rise over run is our slope. We rise up or down. We run to the right. Um, and then we also call that m sometimes. Okay, and today it'll be more one number. It won't be kind of a rise and a run. Um, or it will, but it'll simplify to one number. B is our y-intercept. It's when x equals 0. It's a starting point. Um, and it's where the line crosses the y-axis, right? All right, so moving on. When we're talking about word problems, word problems are difficult because there's, you've got words and you've got numbers and you've got it all together. So a question I want you to ask yourself when you're dealing with these word problems are, is what am I given? Am I given a slope? Well, if you're given a slope, there are a couple things to look for. Um, the words like per or each or for every, um, those things tell us slope. They point us out and say, okay, that's, that's a slope word. So like examples would be um, miles per hour or feet per second a lot of times or price like dollars per cup of lemonade or something like that. Okay, and sometimes you'll see that slash as um, a symbol for per. So those are some words to say, okay, they're talking about a slope. Well, what if they're talking about a y-intercept? A y-intercept would be something like a starting value, so a start, or a um, initial cost, something like that, or a um, start up, or a base fee or something like that if they paid it right away. Um, these can be positive or negative. Sometimes we start in the positive, sometimes we start in the negative, just like slope. Sometimes we're going up, sometimes we're going down. Okay. Some other things to work look for are, are they giving us any totals? And really, totals is easy. You look for the word total or in full or all together. Something like that. What words tell us that they're talking about a total? And then finally, are they giving us any points? They might give us when, like, so when this happens, then this happens. Okay, so let's say when they spend $5, they get seven cups. So we, they might give us some clues, or they might give us a point, an X and a Y. Okay? Another important thing you have to realize is what are our variables? What's changing? Okay, so we need to know what the variables are. Okay, we need to know what the variables are. So let's look at a couple problems. Anna wants to celebrate her birthday by eating pizza with her friends. For $42 total, that's a key word, they can buy P boxes. So I'm going to highlight total. They can buy P boxes of pizza. Each, that's a key word, box of pizza costs $8.50. Okay. The question is what equation would represent this function? Okay. So we have each, each was, and maybe it wasn't, yeah, each is one of our slope words. So I think each goes with $8.50. I think $8.50 is a slope here. What are our variables though? So let's talk about variables. Well, she's buying pizza, so it looks like P is the boxes of pizza. And then, depending on how many boxes of pizza, what's changing? Well, it looks like we're talking about total money or cost. So our, our money could be money or cost. Okay, so if we made an equation, we know that for $42 
and 50 cents, 42.50. That was a total. That would equal the number of boxes of pizza, each pizza costing 8.50. So 8.50 per pizza. Okay. So then this is the money. This is our money total. Um, and that's and we're given that. Sometimes we'll be given the total, sometimes we won't. So we could say this is the equation, 4250 equals 850p. Or if we wanted to say what's p by itself, well, you guys know that this is 850 times p. So we could divide both sides by p, and then we'd have 4250 divided by 8. 50 would equal p, right? And that's how we could we could figure out how many she could do. So if we take that and we take 4250 divided by 850, we would find out that she can have five pizzas, right? Five boxes of pizza would be what Anna can do with her friends. Moving on, Brianna and Lewis have several pairs of athletic shoes. Brianna has four pairs of athletic shoes, and Lewis has X pairs, so we don't know how many pairs Lewis has. They have a total, again we have this word, total, of 11 pairs of athletic shoes between the two of them. Okay, so we have total equals 11. We know Bri, I'm going to call her Bri, has four. And we know Lewis has x. So what equation could we write with that? Well, 11 is a total, so it's probably going to be 11 equals. And then there's 11 between Brie and Lewis. So what operation could we use to write those? Well, that would be 4 plus x, right? So Brie's plus Lewis's would equal the total. So if we wanted to find out how many Lewis had, we would just minus 4 from both sides, minus 4. So then that would be 11 minus 4 equals x. So that would be 7 shoes for Lewis, right? Okay. Moving on. This gets a little more complicated. Nina reads a book cover to cover in a single session. Okay, one session. She's a good reader. At a rate of 55 pages per hour. I'm seeing pages per hour as a slope word. After reading four hours, she has 330 pages left to read. Okay. Now, I think what that is, is four hours, she has 33 pages left to read. They gave us some kind of, they gave us a point. So we know four and 333 left. Those two go together. Okay, so let's think about what our variables are. Our variables are pages read, right? Or pages, maybe pages she has left to read and the hours it took to read those, or, and the hour, or the time it's taking to read the book, right? So time and pages left. Okay, so let's say the pages left is P. Pages left is P is going to be, she's reading 55 pages per hour. So that's taking away pages, right? So I'm going to say that's negative 55 pages per hour. Okay, so for each hour we take 55 times that the number of hours. And then plus, we don't know how many pages the book has, right? So plus the sum total of book pages, right? So all pages, maybe we'll call it. So we don't know how many that is, right? But we're told that after reading for four hours, she has 330 pages left. So we know that 330 equals negative 55 after four hours, and we could use that to solve for this all pages, right? So 330 equals, well, 55, negative 55 times 4 is going to give us negative 
to 20 and then so plus all these pages and we don't know how many pages she started with right or we could have called this like total pages or starting pages or something like that because it's the y-intercept we don't know what the y-intercept is but to find it we could solve for it so that would mean we add 220 to both sides and that would mean that 550 equals all the pages so we've answered this first question how long is the book it's 550 pages now how long did it take Nina to read the entire book. Well, if we go back to our original equation, and now that we know all pages is 550, and you could have just rewritten this, right? So here, maybe I'll do that down here for us. Our original equation is now 55, negative 55h plus 550. Well, how long did it take Nina to read the book? Well, when she reads the entire book, how many, what, what will we know? Will we know how many pages are left or will we know how many hours are left? Or she's read. We're looking for how many hours she's read. But if she's read the entire book, the pages should be zero, right? So we could set up zero equals negative 55h plus 550. Well, then we can just solve for h. So we minus 550 from both sides. And so negative 550 would equal negative 55h. And then we could divide by negative 55. And negative 550 divided by 55, that's just positive 10 equals h. So that means she read all 555 page, 50 pages in 10 hours. So we found out how many pages there were and we found out how long it took her to read the book. So let's do one more. Zane is a dangerous fellow. He likes to go rock climbing in active volcanoes. One time when he was inside the volcano he heard some rumbling so he decided to climb out of there as quickly as he could. He climbed up at a rate of four meters per second. I see per is probably being a slope word. After three seconds, he was 13 meters below the edge of the volcano. Okay, this one I kind of want to draw a picture. Okay, so he's in this volcano. Okay, and we don't know how deep it is. We don't know this deepness. But we know that after three seconds, let's say, well, let's say maybe this is 13 feet. Let's say after three seconds, he was 13 feet with three seconds. So that looks like a point, something that goes together, right? Um, and we know he's, or he's climbing at a rate of four meters per second. Okay, so let's talk about variables. And variables, let's say, well, one is time, right? So let's use S for time in seconds. And what's the other thing that's changing? Well, his distance from here, right? His distance from the top. So D is distance. Okay, so we have his distance from the top is he's taking off distance by climbing four meters. So he's taking off, which is negative four meters per second, plus there's this total that we don't know yet, right? We don't know um, where he started. So start, we don't know the starting distance. We don't know this. But we can figure it out because they tell us after three seconds, he was 13 meters, his distance was 13 meters below the edge of the volcano. So we know that at 13 distance, that was after three seconds plus this start, right? So that's 13 equals negative four times three is going to be negative 12 plus this start. 
So if we want to solve for the start, we can add 12 to both sides. And that would mean 25 equals the start. So that means the distance all the way down the volcano was 25 meters, right? Okay, so that's the first question. How far was Zane at the edge of the volcano when he started climbing? In total, how long did it take Zane to reach? Well, we know when he reaches the edge of the volcano, his distance would be zero. So we can use our equation now as d equals negative 4s plus 25, right? And we know that when he reaches the edge, he'll have a distance of zero. So zero equals 4s plus 25. And if we minus 25 from both sides, then negative 25 equals negative 4s, right? And then it's canceled. If we divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, that's not going to be exactly right. But here you can see I wrote 25 divided by 4, that's 6.25. So positive 6.25, because we had a negative divided by a negative, equals the number of seconds it took him to get out of there. So he, went, he got out of there pretty quickly, right? I mean, if he's climbing 4 meters per second, he's pretty fast. Okay. So that is how we talk about linear problems or linear equations in terms of word problems.